Hi guys, it's Tony Robbins. You're listening to Habits and Hustle. Crush it. Today on Habits and Hustle, we have a very special show. We have Darren Olian. Did I pronounce that correctly? You can say say in Norway it's Olian. Olian. But I don't. We don't pronounce it. I just found that out. Actually, it's pronounced Olean here. Olean. Yeah. Okay, I'm but, Canadian, so you can blame it on my Canadianness. Yes. So Olean, Darren Olean is on the podcast, and for those of you who don't know, he has the number one health podcast <laughs> on Apple. According to him, <laughs> just kidding. It could be down now. I don't know. I don't even look. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing. Um, he had that popular Netflix series, Down to Earth, with Zach Efron. He's the author of the New York Times bestselling book, Super Life. Um, he launched a health app called 121 Tribe or 121 Tribe. Either way. Either way it works. He's a partner in Green Path, he's a partner in Baruchas. And he, like I said, has that really fantastic podcast, The Darren Olean Show. Um, and of course, he's a superfoods hunter, which I'm going to ask you all about as well. So with all of that being said, Darren, welcome to the show. Yay! <laughs> so good to be here. It's so good to have you. I feel like I need like a glass of water after all that. Mm. That's, that's a pretty long list of things that you're you doing. started scratching the surface a little bit. I mean... Is there, how much more can there be? There's a lot, actually. Wow. I don't yeah. even know where to begin. Well, I know where to begin with you. I want to begin with the first thing that I wrote here because I'm fascinated by this, this superfood hunting thing, because mm. I want to know how you got the name. I do know that you did create the Shakeology Shake from uh, Beachbody. Mm. And I know that because even though I'm not a Beachbody person, I love that shake. And mm. I've heard for years that it is the best like ingredients mm. on the planet mm. and some like crazy guy was like in the jungles finding them and then it so happens to be you imagine that crazy crazy yep. yep so start with that how did you become this and tell me what that like yeah i think you know you know coming from minnesota and my dad was an ag professor at the university of minnesota oh. he taught farmers how to be better farmers from oh, a business perspective yeah and, you know, listen, I have cousins that are still cowboy hat wearing, you know, people. And so just, you know, just from that area, uh, when I got out of college, physiology, nutrition, I, I, I started looking and studying more nutrients, what was in food, what was not in food, what was in supplements, not in it. It eventually just led me to like, what? Like, why are people putting that in it? And and this quality is not good and right. so i was just i was kind of upset and i kept seeing it i kept seeing great marketing great companies doing whatever they're doing on the labels and and uh, the commercials or whatever and i was just like it doesn't match right and so that i was like well um if i'm gonna start really playing with because i started formulating on my own and if i'm really gonna do this I got to meet the farmer. I mean, there's just no other way, farmer or collector or forager, or whatever. And so, of course, you know, the first, well, actually it was an India trip and it inspired me to kind of keep going, uh, looking at Himalayan salt in early 2000s. And then... Uh, is that the healthiest salt to eat? Um, I, it is, it's very good. Yeah, it's okay. 250 million years old. As long as the quarry mining doesn't use, uh, you know, blasting and contaminants and all of that other stuff. So you have to be very careful of what kind of materials they're using to harvest these oh. big blocks of Himalayan salt. But, you know, I'm a big fan of unrefined salt, you know, you right. certainly can use that for electrolytes and, and whatever else. And it's a super nutrient for sure. Multiple nutrients. Right. So. Um, and then it was really when I got in the formulation thing, it was like, okay, I got to show up to the Amazon. I made some connections. So I had been aware of some processors that I had been in con conversations with of, of in Peru and Lima. And, and I was just kept probing them. I'm like, okay, cool. It sounds like your quality is good and you've sent me supply and samples, but I got to show up. I got to see where and how and what and you who. You actually showed up to all like, so yeah. how did you even like, so you just were interested in it from an early age because of your father. Yeah. 
And then you kind of took it upon yourself to then travel to like all these far off places yeah. and like search for the most healthy superfoods, basically. Yeah. yeah. And improve on some of their not great quality, you know? So maca, sasha inchi, moringa, spirulina, shizandra, you know, chaga, you name it. It's like you just go down the list and. And the funny thing, barucas, you know, right, it's you like, know. right. So, so the irony is like, usually I'm looking for something and we're finding information and we're in the fields or we're in the jungle and we're, you know, making tea of chuchuasi and unidigado and doing all these things. How do you but, pronounce half of these things? You do have like a degree in, in, in that linguistics, no, Stephen. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, I, to pronounce I also that. keep the Latin name away. It gets me too confused. <laughs> but uh, usually the common name, there's several common names when you kind of travel to some of these areas. But and it's funny because you get into the story and the, some of the folklore and kind of the ethnobotanal side of things of how these things came about and what they mean to the culture. And so... As soon as I started understanding, okay, quality is the reason I went. Right. But then the superfood side of it started becoming, hey, is this better for the people? Right. The indigenous people? Is this a is there a better way to do this so it's beneficial for the land and the environment? Um, is there a better way to process it so it's not harmful or not fair, fair uh work environments? Like all of that stuff. And you like it's astonishing what goes on behind the scenes. Like, I'm sure. Like I've been in hundreds of facilities and hundreds of fields and jungles and things like that. And so people don't realize the journey that some of these things have to go on. And any part of that journey, the quality can just not be there. Wow. So wait, you know? so then, okay. So then basically, cause you're, okay. So in your, in your book, you talk about life forces. You have, there's five, right? Yeah. Um, but before I even like talk about that, let's talk about this thing because of Baruca, as you said it already. Yeah. So is it Baruca, a Baruca a superfood? So is a Baruca, it's a, it's a nut. Now is this nut, for example, healthier than an almond, a cashew? Is it the health? Why is it the healthiest nut? And are these things readily available for people in like the US, Canada, North America? Yeah. Good question. So, yeah. So I, I got this basically handed to me. I was looking at other other things in the Amazon. And then the Sahadu, which I didn't know about, which is 500 million acres south of the Amazon in, in Brazil primarily. Wow. And so, uh, you know, I, I tasted these things. And the first thing about it was, wow, this is like, tastes like a super peanut. Yeah. Like, so, so number one, I'm always looking at these things that can medicinally, yeah. you don't expect medicinal plants to taste good. There's a lot of stringents and tannins and polyphenols that are strong. Right. Wow. <clears throat> but this was a nut. And so, number one, the taste got my attention because that's not going to be a barrier to entry. People are going to love it. So, wow. then you look. at So, then how, how it became the super nut and why it's nutritionally more superior than any nut is because we tested it. We tested it against all the other nuts. And almost in every category it was superior. So like, as you said, an almond, like the antioxidants that exist in this is nearly 450% more than an almond. Wow. And, and you have, it's a wild food. So think of food as information, less about yeah. all of this stuff. You're getting information and that information is giving you you know, minerals, of course, electrolytes, of course, vitamins and, and carbohydrates, proteins and fats, but it's, you, this is a wild food. And so from that perspective, complete protein, uh, two to three times more fiber than any nut, calcium, magnesium, manganese, copper, zinc, Wow! all of this stuff. And it tastes so good. So I'm like going, so we looked at the research and then we got these, tested them to validate, yeah. verify the research we were looking at. And then of course, then I show up. And so it was overwhelming to see that this is 500 million acres that this Barozeta tree is in and produces these nuts, right? So it's one nut per fruit. So these things drop, they pick them up, 
you can't pick them early because they don't produce the it's technically a seed uh -huh. um and so it's protected from over you know grabbing and, oh, and wow. cultivating there's no outside water it's literally a wild food we're creating an economy there that uh, and a stability there for the indigenous people in this land that wasn't existing um, and we're also planting trees again in this area because this area in the Sahadi or the savannah is being destroyed faster than any landmass on the planet way faster than the amazon itself wow so really? they're just knocking it over unsustainable agriculture practices and beef production so hold on, where did you find this and where like you can't just go to whole foods and buy them and it's like in its uh Whole Foods it's in is, bulk. is also cured. No, you can't. No. Right. Like it's not like why are they not as available then like an almond or I mean, after what you just said, I understand that. But why is it until you kind of brought it to light that it's, you know, nobody even knows that this even exists? Because it's mechanisms that didn't exist. Wow. So if you're looking at, you know, the easy thing is monocrop something, yeah. grow it cultivate it you go back to the same place and you just do that over and over and over and over again now you've created an economy and a, and a commodity right this is 500 million acres right people all over you know the indigenous people collection areas uh only can harvest once a year it's wild. Uh, it's wild there's fires there's monsoons there's stuff so you have to organize right organize. a massive amount of people and so we couldn't just come out of the chute right. going because you, you, we go to the people, say, collect as much as you can. But we can't tell everyone yet because we don't know what the business is going to be. Right. But the people that we do, we say, collect as much and we'll buy it for the next 20 years. And so as we grow, we just keep expanding that into other areas. So we're, number one, creating fair wages for these people that didn't have it. And we're also creating a supply that is consistent, so they always have uh, cash, right? It's amazing, and and so that creates value back on the land instead of it being stripped. And so there's value. There's a lot more botanicals, four thousand more botanicals on that on that land as well. But this one is a very sacred nitrogen fixing plant or tree. And this is why we're planting trees to try to help resurrect the Sahara as well. It's amazing. So it's twenty five percent fewer. It's twenty five percent less fat. Yeah. Six. Uh, it's the best on protein, highest in fiber. So then, where do you sell this? Yeah. So massive online. Yeah. Barucas .com, uh, Amazon, and now one of the major distributors finally came to us and are helping us. Going to. It's going to be sold hit, everywhere, hit like retail. sprouts or Whole yeah. Foods or. Yeah. So, yeah. Is this so this could become like the next almond, let's say. Can well, you make like milk from it like everything yeah. else? Every everyone's milking everything. Yeah, so we have a trail mix. Baruka milk. Yeah, Baruka milk we actually experimented with years ago. It's quite good. Uh we don't have that yet. Okay. But we have the trail mix which we have the fruit from the outside of it that I oh, shaved yeah. off and wow. experimented with and it's like a super graham cracker, more fiber prebiotics. So it's got prebiotic yeah. activity, more antioxidants. We dried it, added it back to the nut. Now it's a, this alchemical, beautiful uh, trail mix. And then I just, we've just finished a, a Baruka Who's butter. Who's we? Who are you doing this with? Well, uh, uh, our, a group of our group of you know friends that we got together. One ex uh, COO of Beachbody, Seth Tuckerman. He oh, came in because yeah. I traveled all over the world with him. And once he retired from Beachbody, it was like, that's too good to pass up. Yeah. And we got Rodrigo, who's Brazilian, who, who was the initial person that introduced me to the nut. He's our CEO. We've got Justin wow. as the chief marketing guy who used to work at Beachbody and other companies too. So yeah, we have a hell of a team. And then we got a hell of a team in Brazil of native Brazilians. That, this is uh, great. And it, it was going away. 
they were everyone was shutting their doors because they in their own country they couldn't scale this in a way that made it cheap enough for the for their own people to eat these but now we're actually selling it in brazil and in other countries now this is amazing so Bar yeah. so so it it could be this thing that you can have now baruch you not yet but like how you have almond butter baruka butter yeah. so we have baruka butter you have baruka butter i'll send you some you're gonna lose your mind yeah it is the i'm not joking it is the best butter ever really yeah so like so in like five how long will it take for this to be synonymous with let's say an almond or a cashew or well i'm sure your audience will help us get there i, I, I mean, mean let's just say how much I, is a pack of this let me ask you that was the price point right yeah now? so it's you know it's a it's we we're very sensitive to that so it's like a it's a superior nut yeah right so you're you know 15 16 bucks uh for a bigger bag this right. is our smaller bag and so smaller. you're smaller. Where's my big bag? I know. It's the last time I, I ate them all. I'm like, I, I was unprepared you. to you bring me like a mini bag. I was going to give you like the, the whole everything. I hope you do. Can you, I, I mean, I will listen, send. this will we'll, be the first time. We'll have, have, yes, because it, it's sent. done. OK, good, because this is actually what I see this. First of all, like, how is this different? I'm curious. I'm a huge fan of coconut, like eating like mm. raw coconut. Mm -hmm. What do you think of coconut? Like, what's the value to value on that? Coconut oil? No, coconut, like chunks of coconut, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, you know, as a snack. Well, it's fantastic. I mean, it's, you know. You, but this yeah. is not, there's, there's no protein in it, number one. Right. It's right. mostly saturated. It's fat. Yeah, plant fat. Would you eat that as a snack? I mean, I just love it because I uh, love it. I don't, I don't eat that much fat in that way. I just. You'd you know, eat just, avocado. Or, okay, what do yeah, you avocado. eat? Like, what do you, what, of all your travels. <laughs> plants, plants, plants. Okay, so you're vegan. I mean, that goes mm. without saying. I mm. mean, I thought that was, you know, I should have said that. Um, <laughs> after reading your book and, you know, about your podcast and the show, I mean, do you, I got it. But, you know, that's, and I also am embarrassed because I have a microwave behind you. And I know, I, I was like, quick, where do I put the microwave so he doesn't see it? Here, let's hit it up. Smash it on camera. I would, I would have, I would it's love to. The best to. use of a microwave. I, listen, I, I totally would, <laughs> but then after you leave, I would be like crying only because I'm a working mom. I'm and gonna send you a toaster oven, and you maybe I have fifteen percent more. I, by time. the way, I totally agree with you. This is what this is like. Also, like one of those things where it's like I'm mad at myself. I hate myself because I know how bad they are, and yet I still have one, and I. This is a microwave intervention. Yeah, it really, it should be. Because <laughs> can you, t I mean, let's talk about this because it does change molecularly, is that yeah. a better word, your food. And it's yeah. really awful. And even standing in front of the microwave is like mm -hmm. radiation, right? Mm -hmm. So what, so you just, well, what is like, so basically you don't believe in a microwave. So we should just all toast our food or the user oven basically. Sure, yeah. Little toaster yeah. oven. I mean, it's it's taking the molecular. It's it's heating from the inside out. So right. So you're thank you for you're slamming the molecules together, creating friction on a cellular. It's terrible. Level. So it's dysmorphia. It within is within its own cell, within its own structure, and then you we're taking that on. Like that's a Russian roulette. I just don't want to play. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're getting hit with all kinds of things. The, the, I think the greatest thing, which is why I do fatal conveniences all the time, I dive into the research. Yeah, on, tell me some. I want to know some of these fatal conveniences. Well, the, that, that's the first well, one. Well, microwaves, that's why I brought it up. Microwaves yeah. are for sure. Um, and then uh, uh, dental floss, that Glide dental floss. Yeah. It's got Teflon on it, which is a massive kidney destroyer yeah. and endocrine disruptor. Dental so, floss? Yeah. So, so it's already out. So I'm not even outing Glide dental floss, yeah. that little stuff that they, they, they've already been slapped for putting, and it's still on. So that slippery stuff, yeah. and by the way, COVID too, there's a Teflon uh, over those masks, uh -huh. the, the, the normal cheap uh, like those blue nurse ones? mask. Yeah. There's a Teflon coating over that. So you're breathing in endocrine disrupting uh immune suppressing chemicals i didn't know that so like the very thing so that's the thing when you peel the onion yeah when you're willing to look i mean you can even you know the solar panels for example yeah. most of the solar panels are being created in china with coal fire plants 
right? Yeah. And then wow. sent here. So so you ha- we have to look at everything in order for things to change. We talked before the before the uh, you Podcast. know we started recording. Um, it's all about systems. Yeah. And if we're delusional with systems, then nothing changes, right? Right. But if we open ourselves up to going, hey. Did I really want to create part of my podcast as a title of fatal conveniences? Are people really going to go, but it's liberating. It's liberating because if we stop the toxic exposure of everyday deodorant, shampoos, chemicalized modern worlds that we're in, because no one has added up all those chemicals. Right. It's cumulative. It's cumulative. And this is why men's motility is in the mm-hmm. toilet or you know and women's uh menstruation is infinitely coming earlier and very yeah. detrimental when menopause kicks in because the we've been compromised from a endocrine disrupting right. chemicals all over the place from wrapping our food in plastic right and uh and you know that's petroleum how about right? tinfoil that's bad too right tinfoil is bad too so what do you wrap your food in don't wrap your food. I mean, like go to places that are using glass or glass or, or, or cardboard. Or cardboard. Or- I'm, I'm an advisor for this incredible company. People just need to know about it, but it's it's more of a uh, business to business. But this incredible company, this is just more of inspiration. Uh, this company, Footprint. Um, so they are providing alternatives to single use plastic uh, with plant fibers and plant dyes. And so oh. Cargill, Beyond Meat, uh, Pepsi, McDonald's, Walmart, they're literally in the billions of units providing new alternatives so that we're not putting styrofoam and yeah. plastic. This is happening. And these companies are doing it. And so we get overwhelmed and like, as a consumer, we're all using plastic. Yeah. Right? You can't get around it. Yeah. But it's coming. And the more pressure we stop, right? Mm-hmm. The things that we do, like okay, let's take some action here. Let's let's not use a plastic bag right. when we're picking up our groceries. Let's not primarily as our water source use plastic bottles. For God's sakes, please don't. Right. Um, get a glass bottle. Let's not use uh, a coffee mug a to-go coffee mug because what they don't tell you is there's a plastic liner in the middle of that cardboard so you can't you put it in the recycling bin doesn't matter so you mean the glass you mean like at starbucks or wherever it's a plastic liner inside inside. so when you put that in the microwave which i've done a million times that's actually even dangerous it's not just paper on paper 100 percent. i didn't know so that's a single use plastic So there are in the top of it too. So all of these things are being changed. They are being changed. So as customers, if we stop, if we continue to stop these big companies, and there are good people yeah. in these companies wanting to do the right thing. Right. Because it's not so easy and it's not so black and white. Right. No, you know, we, I know. We, we want to demonize people because it's whatever. It's what, we, it's what we like to do. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not that simple. Right. None of these things are that simple. And we have to just kind of like, but you have power as a customer. And the more we take control over not having these toxic exposures and say, whoa, whoa, well, I still need to floss my teeth. Right. Here's an alternative. Yeah. Here's a hemp charcoal based covering, which is actually very good for bacteria and fungus anyway so it's actually the opposite oh very beneficial i use this i think i have that one it's a black one and um the company makes it who's who's the company that makes that one it's in this great little cardboard box i totally know what you're talking about and it works it's very good yeah it works it doesn't break because i've tried a few of them break 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 exactly or they get stuck in your teeth yeah it's awful so the point is that we have alternatives but we need to be aware. Why do I need to change? Because if you're pouring Tide, sorry, Tide, uh, in your laundry, yeah. that chemicalized perfume is messing up your endocrine system, your immune system, uh, and it's causing systemic problems. Yeah. And so you're used to a smell. Well, get over it. And there's a lot better essential right. oil infused, better products. So, so you know, I had 
you know, just to complete that whole story, my father suffered from that. Uh, I was a kid and he was one of the first people that had chemical, chemical sensitivity uh, disorder. And people thought he was nuts. We really? did. Yeah. So he would get perfumes and all of that stuff. Now, listen, the guy worked, you know, he was a, a, one of the dragon keepers for the atomic bombs. So he worked on atomic bombs and he lost his thyroid. Right. So he oh had. My. Yeah. And I was like, I'm linking that going, OK, he was a dragon keeper on the Cuban wow. Missile Crisis on an aircraft carrier working on atomic bombs and he lost his thyroid. There's probably a reason <laughs> probably he that's lost crazy. from the radiation. So he had immune suppression and challenges when he would get hit with things that weren't harmonious yeah. biologically. And we're playing a bunch of Russian roulette with all that stuff. That's really good information, actually. Can you give us some other things in the kit? You said I know in your book you talk about the like kitchen purging stuff. Yeah. What else? Give us another couple that people would not normally think of on their own. Uh, well, any rubber spatulas, get rid of them. Like, oh yeah, because when you have you're heat and you're mixing that. stuff, get rid of them. Like use use wood. And hopefully they're not yeah. staining the wood with some other gnarly. So we have to do so, you know, you have to do some, some homework yeah. in that way. And, you know, listen, uh, the, the easy ones with food is just food colorings yeah, and, that's, yeah. and Gatorades. I did a big one on Gatorade and, yeah. and just how, how non-hydrative yeah, it it's, is. It's, it's and, sugar and water and it's yeah. a lot of additives, but do you, so your diet, like give me a day in the life of what you eat and drink. Because number one, I, I when I first saw you, I was like, damn, I cannot believe how fit you are. Like mm -hmm. you're 50. Is that a secret? No. Okay, good. Because you're 50 and you look better than like any 22 year old or mm -hmm. 21 year old, 18 year old. Like not only are you rip, but you just look healthy. Mm -hmm. So you. no, you're welcome. I want to know from morning until night exactly <laughs> what you do. My habits. Yeah, your habits. Yeah, exactly. What are your habits, your daily rituals? Uh, Well, I go to bed super early. What time do you go to Between bed? Between 8 and 8.30. That's what time you go to bed? I do. Okay. Got up this morning at 3.30. So between 3.30 oh. and 4.30 usually. Um, and you live in a yurt. That's a, that's, I do. Okay. Yeah. Which I want to get to. But what's a yurt, by the way? What do you call it? Like, what do you so, definition? You know the Mongolian kind of uh, round structure? Yes. That's... Do you have heat and I air, do. Air? It actually is a... a a uh, high class year because it's my future guest house okay. that I will have once I rebuild my house that I lost in the last episode people saw on the when fires I was, yeah. yeah from the fires so I had to I had to buck the system because they weren't moving fast enough for me to get back on the property so I put wow. up a yurt made it tricked it out inside got my dog back put up solar panels and basically flipped off the bureaucratic slow birds wow. you know i want to get back to that so basically yeah. what he's what he's what darren's talking about when he was filming uh down to earth with zach efron for netflix his house burnt down and then he basically had to move in he moved into a yurt and then hasn't left basically yeah okay um there more or less you know more, more or less yeah. um okay so go back to it so you wake up at 3 30 4 30 yep. in the morning so okay. first thing i do uh, besides pet my dog uh, and let him <laughs> out a great german shepherd chaga uh yeah, shout out cute. chaga uh, i know you're watching i know you're listening you're always watching and listening um, <laughs> hey chaga <laughs> so um go to water uh water uh, hydrogen water, filtered water, vortated water. That's a whole nother big vortated water, vortex, micro clustered water. Yeah, it's a big discussion, which would I probably take the down. rest. Vor yeah, and we're just okay. we're just finishing up uh, through uh, sacred geometry, Fibonacci and through the ability for the water to micro cluster and to organize itself in a living way. I just, uh, we're just fin finalizing a new vortator that I. Are you kidding me right yeah, now? No. So what's, what's the matter with alkaline? I thought, isn't alkaline water good or. It's only um, one part spring of the, water. It's or? only one part of the puzzle. So, I mean, water has several different, you have TDS. Uh -huh. So you have everything in the water. You can test it. And 
even in the show, we talked about TDS as it relates to the mineral content in the water. Right. But also you have TDS in tap water that is not great. Chemicals, uh, pesticides, herbicides. In the water. Drug, yeah. Doesn't, sure. depend, doesn't that depend on where you're living? It goes up and down, right. but it's bas basically there. Their, their job is to clean the water to a degree. Okay. Making sure that when you pull that tap, that bacteria is not going to basically kill you right away. Oh, right. Okay. So there's chlorine, there's fluoride. Now, because of agricultural practices, there's runoff, there's things in our water that are not beneficial, which doesn't allow for cellular hydration is kind of gunk in the body. Again, yeah. more toxic exposure. So I heard, by the way, I mean, not to cut you off, but there's so much everything, everything out of your mouth is like a whole other com a tangent of a conversation that we can go on. Yeah. So I'm trying to stay on point, but then you say something and I'm like, but well, wait, you know, like, you know, like shiny ball over here, you know, <laughs> there's this thing, there's that thing. Like I heard that some of these bottles of water, like mm -hmm. bottle, like is actually worse than actually tap water. And yeah, yeah very, very depending good. on what kind of water it is. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're sitting, they're sitting in plastic. So again, now they're being infused right. with, with plastic and, and plastic, the softer plastic is a take home message for people. The softer the plastic is, the more ability it is to have this endocrine disrupting, oh. mimicking compound of estrogen. That's what makes it softer. There's a chemical mimicking compound of estrogen in there, right? Wow. So that's directly neutering us as a society. So give us an example of what would be a soft plastic that we would use. Well, any of the top cheap brands of coca-cola and pepsi and all, all of those the reasons that really squeeze when you're done drinking like yeah 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 right harder to the plastic like you essentia? Know, feed, yeah essentia is great They're, they've got some great um i knew some scientists that actually worked on that water so in terms of like there's penta's great yeah uh, like fiji's that. okay uh, smart water's okay if you're in the airport you can go for this i just quickly just take it put it in my glass bottle that i bring with and just kind of help, help oh, reorient right. it again, shake it up and get some more activity and oxygen. Does that make a difference? Oxygen. Yeah. If it's it can, been in the bottle anyway? Yeah. Well, it makes a difference from if it scientifically does it or not, it makes a difference for me. Yeah. Just cycle, intentionally. It, right. And water is, by the way, very influential from emotions and intention. And it's a blank hard drive. And this is great work by Dr. Gerald Pollack. Yeah. Great work by the Nobel Prize shared winner of uh, Dr. Luc Montier. Uh, he's 86 years old, met him two years ago. The guy, the science around him, I mean, water episode is a th weeks of a conversation. Of just on the water. Just so, water. So um, can you just finish what you said about the water? The, no, because that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. And maybe you can come back and we could talk only about water. Because I know that's one of your big points forces, in your yeah, yeah for life forces in your book is about hydration. But what did you just say about water and emotion, though? Like, that's an interesting thing I've never heard of. Yeah. So so this great scientist, Dr. Emoto, uh, he's passed away, unfortunately. Um, what he did was he would take water and literally write on the side, love, anger, fear, and then he would basically freeze that molecular structure. And so he, would able, he was able to see the geometry of how the water constructed itself. And when you had hate and fear on that water, the geometry was all off. And when you had love, it was perfect geometry. Now, if people are going, whoa, whoa, that's, that's woo woo. Well, in, I don't remember, I remember in about eighth or ninth grade, when you, you could put a frequency generator and, and hook it up on a, a blank um, piece of tin or metal mm -hmm. and put sand on it and you hit a certain frequency and it would organize itself perfectly in geometries, yeah. different frequencies. We are frequency. That's how this whole entire universe works, right? So we are exchanging information all the time and we don't hear it we don't see all of it and so water is like this entity that is absorbing everything wow. it doesn't have a point of view so it's like a blank hard drive yeah if you wanted to save something you would just save it and the the hard drive doesn't have a point of view about what you're saving right, it just right. saves it same thing with water 
So what Emoto was showing was this like, whoa, this is highly influential based on emotion, based on intention, based on all this stuff. So that took the water world uh, by, by storm. storm. And now, I mean, uh, the, the sharing of DNA when you're just in proximity of water and physical DNA and water and pure, pure water next to it, it's sharing the frequency magnetics of the DNA and sharing it with the, with the water next to it. And you can find and it, it imprints the water that had nothing in it. Oh my gosh. And so this is, this is incredible. It's, it's like the microbiome. We're, we're just starting yeah. to understand this incredible symbiosis mm -hmm. that we have with this, oh, we need microbes and microbes are actually creating vitamins and minerals and yeah. the simulation and the enzymes and like, whoa, okay. So we have to be, that's why antibiotics means, yeah. you know, not favorable to life. When you take those, you just basically clear cut your rainforest uh, and then you have to build that back up. And so we're having just ridiculous issues. Yeah. And this comes by way of just a really bad model. The, the American Medical Association was created on a bad model. It was yeah. created on a fear and a germ theory that Louis Pasteur got wrong. The, the great yeah. chemist of his time, Anton Bekemp, said, wait a minute, it is not that you're catching diseases. It's that every element of bacteria and virus and everything else is coming into to see if anything is advantageous for it to survive. So the bad bacterias and viruses, if you have a strong environment, mm -hmm. it has a very unlikely opportunity to survive. So it leaves. Because right now, we have 10 to the 31 viruses on us right now. Right, right, right. That, that means 10 with 31 zeros after. That is how we live. And so this is the exciting aspect of microbes and viruses and, and the, the empowerment here is what you do yeah. creates a, an invitation for them right. or it invites them out right? because you've created your- Or keeps take, them out. Yeah, you keep, well, they, they're coming in and out. Yeah. They're assessing. Just like if I came to a new land, my ancestors as Vikings yeah. and I come here and like, whoa, we're going to die here. I'm out. Or it's like, wow, there's vegetation, there's fish, there's everything. Like, I'm hanging out, you know? So yeah. it's the same kind of thing. So we are responsible for our terrain. Yeah. And no, I think that's very true. Then what do people do with about the water situation? Because you don't believe in, obviously, plastic, I mean, water bottles. If they have to pick one water for the average mm. Joe who doesn't have access and they're running and going and because a lot of this stuff takes yeah. a lot of time to research and like a knowledge, the knowledge base has to be there. And when people are like running around, like what is one type of would if, if they have to drink water, what would you say the best kind would be? Well, there's I would answer that two ways. Number one, it's not expensive to get a reverse osmosis yeah, unit. Yeah, so that's good, You like the reverse osmosis. Or a distillation. You could get those for a couple hundred bucks and now you've just saved yourself from buying water for the rest of your Right, the reverse existence. osmosis. Right, yeah. so AquaTrue has a great one. Uh, you just pour it in there, you take it with you. Yeah. You can take it with I'm you. I'm gonna write so, that down. Um, they're great. Uh, and if anyone wants to have a affiliate link on there that they give 150 bucks off, I, I don't even okay, know Okay, well, I'm gonna add that. that. I'm gonna put that in my notes yeah. for sure. So, so that clears the water, right? So you clears it of the junk, it gets rid of everything. And so now you have this, this water that does need the, ele the electrolytes. So don't drink it, uh, don't drink distillation or reverse osmosis on its own because the, the body is get the water oh, okay. is a gradient that needs it. So you can Himalayan salt, unrefined salt at a pinch to each glass or half a teaspoon per gallon. That's about the right amount of electrolytes. Okay. And that's the type of electrolytes that are small enough to create flow within the cell. It's all about cellular hydration, yeah, yeah. right? So that right there, that step yeah. changed someone's life. And now they can drink as much as they want. And then another step is they could activate that water. And that's they, what you're doing with it. Was it yeah. called vortexing or? Yeah. And when is that this, gonna be done? Very soon. So it-, it Is it a machine? 
yeah it's a little it's a little it's got like, like this little huge. yeah little leaf like paddle yeah on that it's all sacred geometry and it spins at a certain rate and it creates like a little tornado and all that's pulling in more oxygen and changing the structure of the water and you can feel it on your tongue it's really? softer and yeah absolutely and so that's where activating water water needs to move as soon as water stops oh, okay it's gonna breed it's gonna deaden it's not gonna have the energy it's gonna lose the hydrogen and oxygen and then you know sit sit look at a stagnant pond and you will see the algae and everything what, forming, right? Yeah, or, what happens? So water vortates in nature. That's oh, true. What so do you think about so it? you're just recreating that. You're looking at nature and recreating that. And that's the kind of life we're in. So you can activate water in that way, add the Himalayan crystal salt, get a glass bottle. You can even have, you know, this great company, uh, Blue 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 Bottle Love. Uh, they have these great blue bottles. So it's a great frequency, that color infusing in the water from the light is really good frequency for water. I'm like taking all these notes, blue bottle. Love. Okay. And then it has like things of gratitude etched into it or love, whatever you want. And you can carry around a smaller one or a liter bottle. These are easy ways. So right. you take your, you just solved your water issue. You put it in your glass bottle. You're taking it with you. You're, you're, the intention of that bottle is yeah. infusing your water. You've maybe vortexed it. Now you've just like in, in, you know, created this live element that is so powerful. Detoxification creates energy. People don't realize that when you, when the cells come up, when the, the water comes up to your cell, it actually creates what's called an exclusion zone and it pushes the protons and electrons away from each other when it comes up against the cell wall and it literally like a battery creates energy. Wow. So it's, it's anyway, that's it. Oh, anyways, like nine hours later. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. no big. Okay. So then finish. So then I drink at, water. <laughs> we're at 4 30 AM. <laughs> so, so how much water do you drink? I literally Ali, are still Ali, at 4 30. Yeah. So we're still at 4 30. <laughs> it's going to uh, be a nine and a half hour podcast and we're going to get at like six, you know, we'll be at like six o'clock in the morning. Oh uh, yeah. And then we'll do the morning <laughs> routine. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so then, um, so I drink a liter of water in the morning. Okay. Yep. How about putting lemon in your water? I do Lemon's that. great. Okay. It's a great way to structure the water. That's a nice hack and mineralizes okay. easily, easy to do that. You can even put cucumber in, you could all kinds of things. That's, okay. It's a great natural way to, uh, enliven your water and structure it. Okay, good. Can I nice... masticate the lemon? Do you know what that yeah. is when you put mm -hmm. it through that machine? Do you, yeah. do you think that's good? Yeah, just do it fresh. So as soon as you do that, put it in your water and, and you're just great. do it. Okay. Well, yeah. I keep it in my fridge for a few days. Like I do like three or four lemons, and then so it's better to do like a half an hour. Okay. Try to do fresh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I, and I understand now why. Okay, go on. Yeah. So then drink the water. I do a little stretching, and and then I go right to like a meditation, and I usually start with some breath, uh, some nose breathing, and some. How breath. long do you do the meditation? Uh, it can be anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, you know, um, just, you sit there for 20, you can do that for that long. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is this the same breathing that you were telling me that you, so like, by the way, for those who don't have, don't see what he looks like, if you haven't watched the Netflix, um, documentary, uh, or the docu-series or see his podcast, he looks identical to Laird Hamilton. It's like they're <laughs> brothers. And then I, I told him that and he's like, oh yeah, we actually work out together all the time. And. So that's why I'm going to say, like, do you guys do, you do the same kind of breathing technique for the XPT training? Is that what you do? Yeah, we've done okay. a lot of breathing over the years, I'm man. Sure. Hours and hours, and we've like see our relatives. And, oh. Like, it's pretty really? intense. It's great. Like the breath. So you're not talking. You're talking about breath work, then, yeah. right? Yeah. So that, is that what you're doing in the morning for 30 it, minutes, or you're doing the minute? Or no, I just do a few rounds of like some breathing stuff. Usually, some nose breath do some light breath holds because that's a whole other great yeah. activation of challenging your um, CO2 tolerance and oxygen. Do you do saturated. the Wim Hof? I also had Wim Hof on this episode, uh, not this, on this podcast. Uh, Wim's the best. So, yeah. yeah. He's been out to, you know. Like, well, of course. Yeah, training I mean, with us of and course. Stuff. Yeah, he's the best. 
And he was like, you know, do you do his method then too? Yeah, I mean, you yeah. do any method. Yes. Well, okay. I mean, there's all kinds of different things uh, that you can do. I, you know, I did holotropic breathing and Kundalini yoga when I first got to LA. Oh my um, gosh. And and that's some intense breath stuff. Wim just took it, and he brought this incredible. Uh, you know, aspect and structure around breath. And right. I'm so grateful for that. Um, and then we just took it and, and we really uh, always breathe after workouts because the recovery is so incredibly in, uh, amazing. You oxygenate the, the tissues again, oxygen grabs the lactic acid and gets it out. So whenever we're done working out, we just go right into a mostly Wim Hof stuff. Um, but then, of course, breathing, there's a lot of stuff around nose breathing that we should go in. Uh, Patrick McEwen, amazing guy, uh, the Don't Oxygen Advantage. He's a, a kick-ass guest. Really? He's the best from know. Ireland and his <laughs> accent's the best. Okay. Um, Patrick McEwen's done a lot of research for 20 years saying, everyone, we should not ever breathe through your mouth. you got to breathe through your nose. And there's... a incredible read the book i'm cool. going to because yeah. you know what i i've been to a lot of these different retreats about and I, even with when i was with laird at his place doing his xpt thing and there are people who can really do this breath work thing properly i guess yeah. i don't know why it doesn't work like people go to a whole new place like you said you see your ancestors relatives i'm sitting there looking around everyone's having this like out of it body experience and i'm like just sitting there like mm -mm, like nothing happens maybe you're already a master maybe i am that's exactly what it was that, that's what i was hoping you would say <laughs> that's exactly what it was no it doesn't work i don't know why am i doing it well, wrong maybe it works just in the way that it works for you i mean that's the thing he's like it's you know there doesn't have to be a thing it's still physiologically helping you okay right but I'm, I want to see an ancestor. I want to see a dead relative. Well, listen, we, you know, we did hours of breath before. Like, we're not talking okay. a few rounds of breathing. We did it for hours. And then you're just like loopy town. Like, right. That's a, some people are like, they like, yeah. they, like, it's unbelievable yeah. what happens. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, there's no, there's no place to get to. Okay, yeah. this guy, I'm going to read this book, but yeah. and then go so on. Then so we're then we're so breathing, we're I'm meditating. <laughs> yeah, 445. I'm breathing, I'm meditating, and then I go into a stream of consciousness writing. And that's really that place where I'm allowing the subconscious to come out and let whatever needs to come out. And that will kind of, sh who knows, I could have had a dream and that kind of exercises the dream and allows meaning to come out. Or it could be just inspiration i feel something i feel something it could be about a business that i don't i can't quite put my finger on and i let that come out and usually it really sets me to see my life and all of my projects from this perspective uh -huh. and then as i'm kind of winding down naturally for me what happens is there's a natural to-do list that starts coming okay cool i'm here and now let's do this and then i get like just inspiration from kind of beyond, right? Beyond the monkey mind. But eventually the mind comes in to organize everything. Wow. You know, so that's that's kind of that. I take my dog for a run around the property, um, which is always great. And then I usually do a workout at that time. So, so when kind of, so you haven't eaten breakfast. Are you an intermittent fasting kind of person or not? Yeah, I mean it's funny that that term is a term now, right? So um I started doing that. I fasted once a week, like 36 hour fast once a week, of course maybe you did. 20 years ago. And 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 then I kind of started eating regular, but now I'm like, yeah, I'm probably a 15, 16 hour person uh intermittent. So so two two meals a day feels right for me at this point. So, um, so wait, you come home. Hold on, we're gonna get yeah. to the meal then. I thought you were gonna eat, but you didn't. You come yeah. home, dog walk. Oh, so out. I've made elixir though. I've made adaptogenic, and that's a that's a whole nother. So I've made before I sit down. I've made. When yeah. do you make this at 3.45 in the morning? After I drink my water, I make my oh. like warm cacao, shizandra, chaga, rhodiola, gorana. Like I make that. Where are you buying this stuff from? Ralph? I mean, where are you? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I got people. I got connections. <laughs> I was going to say, where, you, where do people get this stuff from? Well, like Tarot, you know, you know yeah, from I know Force tarot, of yeah, Magic. Of so they've got a lot of great stuff. Um, I'm talking about it for people who are, you know, listening. Where do they buy? Can they online, Amazon? Yeah, so uh, Ron T. Garden's a great uh, master of good quality stuff. Uh, Rose Mountain Herbs has got a great bulk. Uh, they do sustainably okay. harvesting. Uh, Z Naturals. I mean, obviously, I created Shakeology. I created some boosts within that that are that I use every day, and that's an incredible ginsengs, rhodiola, cordyceps, all in one. Uh, it's like a little Shakeology boost. Wow. So I, so I would, you know, the cool yeah. thing is I created some of these things that I get to use every day. Absolutely. Do you drink Shakeology, by the way? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you do? Okay. Yeah, the vegan ones. And like, I'm really into bowls right now. So I make a uh, Shakeology bowl with berries. And then I add like four bananas and apples and like just a mound of barucas and baruca fruit. And like, that's oh my, my first meal. So it's literally a delicious. Flintstone size bowl of fruit is typically my and nuts and nuts. Okay. Yeah. So then what, so what you make the elixir with all those ingredients. Yeah. That you said. And then that's kind of my, it, you drink that. Like, yeah. So and, I'm sipping that throughout my, what makes it an elixir? What's the, what's the, what's the definition of an elixir? Well, it's just a, it's like just, a shake. Is yeah. It's kind? not really a shake. It's, you know, I, I'm not adding like food protein to power it. or whatever. Yeah. I'm not adding into it. So it's, it's adaptogenic herbs. Yeah. It's medicinal mushrooms. It's cacao. It's things like that. So it's an herbal Sounds blend. Good. It is good. And I always, it's always tasting like monk fruit. So it's I a great way that. to get yeah. the, the sweetness in there. Is that in your book, that recipe or no? Uh, not, put, I mean, I'm always changing it. You know, like it's always changing based on my feelings exactly. and moods and where you, where you yeah, are exactly what I at have. 4 a.m. Yeah. Um, so then, so yeah, I'm drinking on that. And by the time I'm done with that, I'm ready to roll. Right. So then I, is it like caffeine for you? Do you drink caffeine? I do. I, I you know, I do like I, I cycle it because ca caffeine's got an edge to it. Mm -hmm. um, coffee, I don't do. Um, but Guarna from the Amazon matcha green tea is a favorite. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so those things I do. I don't always rely on caffeine. Right. Um, because there's a whole stem cell conversation, which is too big to have. Another at this one. Point. You keep on saying these things. It's a too big conversation. I mean, <laughs> are you going to be my only guest coming back on the show every weekend? And for the ninth time in the last, you know, the next two months is Darren again talking about. Remember, you he know, teased <laughs> us about that one thing. Exactly. You keep on like mentioning something. How do I not go and down the rabbit hole with all these things? I mean, look at my notes here. You'd think that I was in school, like in high school. Like, you know, Professor Darren. So, okay, so then I'm even losing train of thought. Okay, so. Working out. Working out. What, yeah. what do you do for workouts? Functional stuff. Uh, I like resistance stuff. So I you like do all weight stuff or body weight stuff? Body, both. I like just moving heavy things. Uh, do you do cardio besides running the dog around the town or? I, I don't. Not anymore. I mean, I used to do some triathlons, biathlons and stuff like that. But now I do things that really feel better. Like I'll do intermittent sprints and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll get aggressive with very short windows of hit training yeah. and stuff. So, uh, we'll squ squeeze that. Who's we, who do you work out with now? Yeah. Laird so or? Laird's in Hawaii typically in this okay. uh, riding monsters. Right. <laughs> um, but, but that same crew, okay. uh, we got, you know, crazy, I don't know the crew. Would you tell cra me crazy guys coming in and out actors and sports guys and, the Malibu uh, crew. Yeah. Yeah. And musicians and. And they just, come to the yurt and you guys do it at the yurt or not, do you go somewhere? Go to the no, beach? I mean, I'm, I'm typically, you know, three, about three days a week, we're meeting at a buddy's house in his, in his double garage with all of the crazy equipment. So fun. Uh, now yeah, you're talking my language. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, so you're doing the, all the sorts of stuff. For sure. Yeah, it's fun. Do you have any girls who go there or? They're, they're invited, but it's. Can I come and work out with yeah. you guys? Yeah. That's I mean, as long as, as long as our buddy Johnny's cool with, he's right now. So he's one of the sensitive ones gotcha. with COVID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, cause we're having a Super Bowl party and he's like, only the people that I. Uh, I see. All right. So, but when it loosens up. 
Because now you're come talking my language. But I you can certainly come to the yurt. I've got I've got stones that I've gathered. I want to see this yurt. I've got a whole stone. So I'm on 50 acres. We're in the middle of nowhere. Are you kidding? No, no, no. So we I have stones and trees and all no, kinds. I feel like you and I like bonded. I feel like we're going to yeah. be friends. Yeah. I am going to go to that yurt and I am going to work out with you guys if it's the last <laughs> thing I do, because that's Done. now that sounds like my, you know, my cup of tea. Done. So then you work out with these fellows or whatever. Yeah. For how long is a workout? You said, An I hour? mean, when we're really after we stop jabbing and stuff, really yeah. these workouts are 30 to 45 minutes, just hard and intense. Okay, and yeah. you, and then three, and then the other days that you're not doing those I'm workouts, just, you know, creative. And sometimes we're uh, I'm doing some plyos and sprints and stuff on the beach. Sometimes I'm sprinting up hills on my property. Sometimes I'm throwing around stones. Sometimes I'm making stuff up. So you're you just know? doing a lot of activity, basically. Yeah, I have to do something. Yeah, every no. day. Every day. Yeah. And then, okay, now what time is it? Seven a.m. or what time? No, are we no, talking? no. So this is you know I've worked actually. So after I've done a lot of stuff, I'm getting into work. So then when it comes about eight, that's when we meet. When's your yeah. first meal then? It's about ten on average. Ten, ten thirty. Ten thirty. And then what do you have for lunch? If you said you you that whole so then big I thing. yeah so then I just really eat about four. If it was up to me, most times I eat at about four and that's it. That's my main meal. And what do you eat for you? That's a massive, pretty much all the time, a massive salad with tons of colors. Wow. Right. Yeah. So with barucas, with kimchi, and then I make like a spirulina, tahini, miso, uh, ginger dressing that will blow your mind. So the wow. dressing itself is a superfood. I, right? I mean, ginger is a superfood in itself. I yeah. Mean. And spirulina is spirulina one. is like massive yeah yeah so that's mixed up and that and that's and then i'll have like you know sweet potatoes i'm not i'm a big fan of just potatoes too and um maybe uh maybe i'll go crazy and make a little pizza what? like a vegan pizza oh. that's just ridiculously good or a burrito that i make or a suit like super soup mode right now with the colder weather yeah. um so yeah, it's it's that's kind of it. Well, it's interesting because it, the vegan thing, I for me, I never get enough protein when I don't. And I know you talk about the protein in your book too, mm -hmm. but like I never get enough protein with the vegan. How do you know so you're I, not getting enough? Well, I, I don't feel satiated, or yeah. I feel I'm eating too much carbs, or yeah. like I I find to be vegan, it's 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 like very like complicated to do it right. Maybe. You know, like you sat like you're so in like in it, mm -hmm. like in the weeds with it. You're probably I mean. You're so muscular, like you are, you're so muscular. Like I feel like in order for me to be like muscular and like toned, I need that, that protein, like yeah. animal protein. Maybe, uh, I would, I would say that, you know, it's a diversity, diversity of food. It's a diversity of fiber. Yeah. If you focus on diversity of whole yeah. foods and fiber, that will take you a lot further because yeah. number one you're you're feeding your microbiome yeah and so it's not what you're eating it's what you're able to assimilate yeah so from that perspective my diversity is always and my quality is uncompromising right? yeah so the quality That's is always there is. the diversity is always there so for me from a i've challenged the protein thing myself personally upside down and sideways yeah so um it's really just when you look at the macro carbohydrates, proteins, fats, if I just continue to eat the plants and the salads and the diversification of the soups and the nuts and the legumes and all of these things, it's funny that I get exactly the amount of, which is also peer reviewed science of 10 to 15% yeah. protein and I get everything I need. And if I feel like I'm more hungry, I just eat more of the same thing. Yeah. And then I get the balance based on all of it. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the work of Dr. Walter Longo and the work of uh, uh, T. Colin Campbell, I mean, they very clearly show in the evidence that yeah. if you go over that, especially with animal-based protein, you're turning on cancer potential without a doubt. And that's Well, when I look at the other stuff, like, you know, yeah. My husband loves these impossible burgers. I'm not, I mean, I shouldn't be saying this on the camera, but you know, like if you look at what's the ingredients yeah. in these like fake or alternative meats, yeah. it's a lot of sodium and a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that I don't find to be very healthy. Yeah. I mean, isn't it better to have something that's pure, like yeah. a hamburger? Whole food, plant-based, well. No, no, whole food, like I mean, I'm talking about a whole food, like if it's sourced properly, grass-fed, organic, isn't that better than having 
a, a, a fake meat burger that's full of, you know, salt and whatever the hell else they're putting in there? Well, from my perspective, no. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're dealing with, you know, grass fed, all of that stuff. Well, you know, 99% of the people don't have access to that anyway. Yeah. So they can order it online. Yeah. For me, yeah. I would first answer it morally and ethically. I don't, for me, I know too much that I don't need that any nutrients yeah, exactly. from that. And not to mention an inflammatory and immune response goes up every time you consume any meat. Yeah. Because you're eating what they're eating, right? So that's the whole problem. Yeah, well, and the soil that they're having. And you're eat yeah, of course. Yeah. And you're eating flesh of another being. Yeah. So your immune system has to go up. The inflammatory system has to react. And so you're now under a stress. And if you're Do you hate me now that I told you I eat meat, that I'm a no, carnivore? It's not my point. Are you not, not coming back on my no, show now? No. It's not, you know, that's the thing. It's not my job to convince people. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. want to convince. I don't want to take that on. Yeah. I'm just gonna provide a different thing. It's not, you know, it's not my duty. I'm I my duty is to myself, my morals, my ethics, and and where I'm going. And if people get inspired and get some information I'm inspired then cool great and if they listen if more people just replaced some of their meals and there's great calculation by this this program this lady who's, who actually she saved uh campaigns against using straws and single-use plastic mm -hmm. and now she did calculations on if all of us stopped eating or at least replaced eight meals a week. So that's basically one meal a day yeah. plus one that we would sequester all of the CO2 in the United States if all of the 330 million people plus wow. you would just be healthier. I got to see, excuse bless me, you. thank you. I agree. I'm not actually a big meat eater anyway. What I like is fish. I'm a big fish person. Mm. You know, that's, be careful. that's, I know. And the problem with fish, honestly, like that, I know that it's very toxic and all that stuff. So I guess when I say meat, Eat away. I, I, I know, right? Like, it's like, I, I totally I'm agree. sold. I know. But then where do I do instead? Give me a protein that I can have. That's Everything not, has protein. You, you won't eat eggs though. You, you no, don't eat nothing. I don't eat them. No cheese, no eggs. Nope. So what is your protein? I mean, this is a great protein. I know it's, that is an it's excellent an incredible protein. protein. Because I mean, nuts are an amazing protein. Beans are behind every centurion uh, group on the planet. But they make you so bloated and Not gassy. Not if you prepare them correctly. And it might be a, 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 an opportunity to heal whatever the gut, because yeah. we do know the gut doctor, uh, Dr. Will, um, uh, Cole? Bolshewitz. Oh, I Will Cole say. is also great. I just talked uh, to him yeah. this week. Oh, yeah. yeah. I he's think he's awesome. coming on my show soon. I think in a couple of weeks or something. He's great. Yeah. Uh, so Dr. Will Bolshewitz, uh, endocrinologist. Yeah. So literally a gut doctor. Yeah. Right? And he's like, it's not about starving all of that stuff. It's actually more diversification. He looked at my book and yeah. he goes, shit, we're saying the same thing. No, you're right, though. I have heard that. It's yeah. about because you eat, you know what happens actually, too, that you eat the same foods. And this has happened to me because I've been to an allergy doctor. I have a tendency, I'm a creature of habit, I eat the same food over and over and over again. Exactly. You become allergic to it, your body reacts very badly exactly. to it. We're not meant We're to not meant mono to. eat, right? So yeah, our true. diversification, uh, you know, from we're, we're down to 30 foods yeah. and our ancestors were over 300, Yeah. right? And so, we, but we get into these habits yeah, and these bad habits. habits and then it's all of a sudden, like you said, and then how are they processed? How are they created? Totally. How are they grown? All of them, those, then that goes into fatal conveniences, yeah, right? So it's absolutely. like, oh shit, they're not done right. They're not soaked before you, like, of course you're going to bloat and react to things that aren't prepared correctly. So then you go, okay, well, if I do it, right. if I do it right, uh, then I'm going to eliminate that. Yeah. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater with these foods, you know? So then if you eat the beans, you say you soak them and uh, how long should you, like, if I get, like, if I get a, can overnight of beans overnight Should I get just, rid of the water and just soak them in water if i yeah. take a can of garbanzo beans yep. i soak it in water for a night mm -hmm. uh and then what and get then, rid of the water and then cook them and there'll be that how much less of gassy well you're getting rid of the phytic acids yeah. the lectins i'm gonna the, do that you know all that stuff no, and then is, and then let your 
Because that's the other thing. Meat doesn't have any fiber whatsoever. No, so all yeah. of the important information that we're getting mm -hmm. from fiber and our microbes, you're not getting. So you got to let yourself build up that, that micro forest, forest again. Yeah. Right? I think that's you so You starved true. it out. And now you've got to build it up again. My gosh, you're like a found. I, mean, I haven't even gotten to any of my real questions. Can you believe this? I a little bit, but not so much. I want. I haven't even asked you yet about your the Netflix series Down to Earth with Zac Efron. How did you even meet Zac in the first place? And how did you get a show? And tell me about that experience. And, you know, one of the most like that show is great. But one of the craziest experience on the show, like that you've seen, because that show, like you go mm. to different places and well, you yeah. can talk about it. It's yeah. So, well, yeah, it was a funny serendipitous moment. So um, I had this idea of super. Well, the idea was impressed upon me to do a superfood hunting show for yeah. about a decade because, it, yeah, it sounds cool. Right. And it's so authentic to who you are. Yeah. I mean, it couldn't yeah. be more. Yeah, exactly. So. But, but as, as the years and I would sit with producers, I'm like, oh my God, this is like, they don't get it. And like, yeah. I'm out. I don't need to do a show. I want to do a show if it's going to enlighten and help people. Right? right. So that's always been the genesis. So I had this idea as I got more exposed to other environmental things, more active and other stuff. I expanded the ideas and I kind of wrote that down. Like, that's the kind of show I want to do about the environment, about foods, medicinal plants, like systems. Right. Yeah. Um, what's working, what's not working, what do we need to do? What do we got to stop doing? And, um, so I had that, I kind of sat that to the side, busy, busy. Uh, but then from rich roll podcast, yeah. uh, I had done Zach had heard it. We'd never met. And then, um, he had reached out. He has a mutual friend with rich. Mm. And so he reached out to that guy. And then Rich eventually asked me, is it okay if I give Zach your number? And uh, I said, sure. Like, I don't know about you, mm. but I've met many celebrities and athletes and they just want, you, oftentimes you spend time and they don't do or whatever. They're looking for, you know what I mean? A hundred percent. So I was I know like, exactly what, I, what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I live in LA. Trust me. I know exactly what you mean. Ex yes. Exactly. So I just kind of like, cool. I don't know him, but. Like, I'm cool if he wants to chat. And so nothing, didn't hear anything. Not that I was sitting by my phone and right. I forgot about it. And so all of a sudden, um, I get this uh, uh, text message and he announces know, himself from, you know, I didn't have it in my phone. So he's like, hey, this is Zach. And he wrote this really nice, sweet email or text message. And so I said, yeah, it seems pretty nice. And so let's have... Let's have a vegan dinner <laughs> or lunch. I guess he's a vegan too, right? Well, I, I mean, I don't know where he's at now, but uh -huh. he's definitely played a lot of stuff on the show. He went, he, 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 I think he was mostly plants at the time, but yeah. then at the show, he felt guilty that we were already had set up all these other things. Yeah. So he ate whatever. I don't know what he's doing right now, but we'll see. Um, but so we ended up having this amazing cool connection and he asked me all this stuff about what i was up to and and we just got to know each other and again he's a very sweet human and um really felt like he cared about the world and the environment and nature and and really at the very end um i wasn't even planning to talk about it uh and he said what else are you doing ah oh, they have this idea of the show and i wasn't even pitching him on it i right. was just kind of telling him and then he ended up, he goes, wow, that sounds amazing. And then he calls me back after, after we left and he goes, Hey, I reached out to my team and I have a deal sitting at Netflix, but the concept I kind of don't want to do. And I asked him, can we change it to this concept? And he said, I'll do the whole thing. Like I'll be in the whole thing. If we're going to do this, like I'll be in it instead of just kind of being a couple episodes of this other idea. Exactly. Yeah. So long story short, he walked me into a show that he had and we changed the whole thing to this in environmental health wellness kind of, you know, lens. And, uh, and, and, and listen, I wanted to go, you know, we're going down rabbit holes. I wanted to go a lot deeper right. wow. down these rabbit yeah. holes. And and it was hard to let go. And there was a lot of kind of back and forth because I didn't want it to be a Hollywood thing. Yeah. I didn't. I had my connection to Zach. So yeah. I knew that Zach 
cared as yeah. much as I could tell in his heart. But I didn't know all these other people. Right. And I didn't know. And they're controlling the storyline. And so it was like, oh, shit, is this is this good for me to do? Yeah. Like, is this going to be, is this going to just be watered down? Yeah, watered down. Yeah. And so ultimately, it was learning and having radical honesty with the producers and the trust and the, you know, we're now out and we're filming and I'm like, I might quit. I don't know if I'm going to do this. Really? So you might have, you would have quit. Yeah. There was that moment yeah, when you're like, sure. you know what, I'm not going to do this. For sure. I'm like, God, I don't know. Like I like what this. were the kind of ideas that they were like thinking to do that you're just not interested? Well, in? it wasn't that it was just less of what. Right. It was just like a, a very small fraction of what yeah, you're, I had. I had I had experts in every episode and yeah. I talked to them already. And like, you want to do this? You want to do this? We're going to talk to you. We're getting into it. We're going to make a difference. Yeah. And I'm talking to my colleagues at yeah. this point. Like throwing my jugular out on the line. Yeah. And then we're like, well, we can't really have that conversation with them because we have to do this and this and this. We can't really dig in that deep because of the the kind of way we're going to tell the show, yeah. the, tell the story. And I was like, what? Right. Like, <laughs> So the bottom line is it took a lot of very open, which I'm really grateful for the team is badass amazing team wow so it wasn't out of integrity the show right it was very much in, te in the integrity of me because it wasn't like we were making stuff up yeah. and not being authentic it was just trusting that the story and they were always like listen if we get another season if we get to do this some more then we'll be able to ratchet it up but we're trying to get which they were right Mm -hmm. We got people that aren't in this space. They're not in this space. Yeah, yeah. They woke up to like, whoa, I'm entertained. I'm excited. I'm inspired. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm traveling with you. You guys are having fun. Yeah. Around really a lot of intense subjects. Absolutely. That is not mainstream. Right. And so that surrender is a great lesson for me. Check the ego let it go but trust the people to put together an amazing show and they did and they kicked ass and so um so yeah that's i hope we get a second season and i hope we get to do it again and because we'll yeah 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 keep it going where so how many episodes was that that was eight episodes epi okay yeah. which one was your the most for you your favorite episode that you learned the most or you thought was most impactful well i think it's almost it feels like your children are a certain right point. like i didn't like hanging out in like the cities that much right um london and france I loved being in the water episode because yeah. it's in the in Lourdes in the mysterious water episodes where we we were in the mir the miracle side of this water. Yeah, I think uh, I know. It, yeah. mm -hmm. And then um, and then, of course, I fell in love with Iceland. I really did on our the first episode when we because in our off days, I actually did some foraging. I did you hooked up with this herbalist and of course and we had we just went out in the country and just like god it was just so so much space different planet how long um, were you gone for well we were able to come back every so often for a few days oh you um, oh okay. yeah but it was it was a good four months of on and off filming pretty intense oh yeah, yeah that yeah. is yeah and then you come back for a few days and go back again and yeah and sometimes you want you would just go right to the next one right it must so. be exhausting to also because you're going from from place like some you're not filming all in one place you're like no. going from one like country to another like yeah, yeah. constantly yeah it's yeah it's exhausting but you know when you're fueled by yeah. a mission and it's also like it's, what a what a nice experience what Amazing. a like a life experience that Amazing. is and you walk away and being inspired i was inspired by people just like i think a lot of people saw great people from other countries doing amazing things. Absolutely. You know, there's these two science women um that we met uh in Iceland uh and we I didn't see that episode. Which one was that? Yeah, it was the first one. Oh, so if I didn't you check see that out one. the first one, she, so they were great because they were just 
totally dedicated, had this great job and figuring out different ways to sequester CO2 back into the earth. And we, sh oh, we, wow. sh 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 we shared that and showed that and saw how literally they're creating rock again from CO2 that would have been, you know, lost in the atmosphere and challenged the atmosphere. So they were able to take it. And wow. So, I mean, just like these smart, powerful women in Iceland who you'd never know. So who found these people? Did you find all the different, like who worked on like getting all the people well, it was a full, for the episodes? Yeah, it was a full crew. So I started with my idea yeah. of my experts. And, and your some experts? of them still, you know, Dr. Pez, Dr. Walter Longo right. in our Sardinian episode, our longevity episode. That was, you know, amazing. I, I saw that one. Yeah. I, I like that one. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Uh, badass. Yeah. Uh, and so, it, you know, once they, once the crew hooked in, it was pre-production. We're like, what about this? What about this? And so I, for, obviously I was super involved right. with the story and what we're doing. Yeah. And, and, but they, you know, it was the team that uh, the team, there was a couple people that lived in this space. Uh, one in particular, Laura, uh, who I was so grateful she was there yeah, because she already had studied a bunch of this stuff. Right. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. Right. So then like, you have a little confidant there and could kind of take the baton and yeah. know that. But now, you know, listen, from all, being on the road, the whole crew is transformed. I'm like, sure. Impacted in a big way. Yeah. And, and like, so how do they, because I know Netflix never reveals their ratings or whatever. How, did they say to you this show did you know exceptionally well yeah. okay like no, what, they were, how did it perform for netflix they were stoked yeah they were super stoked and i think i don't know the last official but at one point i heard whether it's true or not i can't be on the record for that but i heard that it was the 13th at one point the 13th highest rated show ever oh netflix. okay wow so it was it was I think the number was about 65 million people saw it. Are you serious? Yeah. So 65 60. million people saw that. Because yeah. what's that? So Bridgetown's their number one show. Because mm. now you know they have like yeah. number one, two, three, whatever. Yeah, yeah. How many people are watching that one? If, that, if yours yeah. is number 13, possibly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you ah. know, that's where they put it out in any given week now. But uh, yeah, we're still people internationally still seeing it. That's a, of course. I mean, it's, yeah. it's it's evergreen. People are going to be yeah. watching it all the time. Yeah. And then when did you start your podcast? Did you start it? I had started it a year before the show came out, just kind of like oh, okay. putzing around. I hadn't started it, but I had started it. I hadn't launched yes. it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So launching it was kind of like you know, as you know, kind of being busy. Yeah. And then adding in a podcast was like, God, I I want to do it because I want to have like a voice and be able to kind of go into areas that I want. But also you have so much information that you are, A, you're knowledgeable about right. and you're so curious and interested. Yeah. It's a perfect platform for you. Yeah. It makes perfect, now that I know you, it's a, it's a perfect platform. Yeah, so it's cool. I'm glad I did it, but I was reluctant because yeah. it was just another thing added yeah. to my plate. And so I had backed all of these episodes and like luck would have it. The show was supposed to launch a year before it did. Wait, what year did you actually uh, tape, uh, film it? 18, 18. the end of okay. 18. Okay. Uh, and then, and so it got pushed. So I was building this podcast, going to launch at some <laughs> point. And so literally like a month or so before the show popped, a few, no, it was a, yeah, it was a month or two. I had started the podcast wow. and then the show came out and went, <laughs> like everything of mine just exploded. Did everything just go crazy for you? Yeah. Yeah. And the most important thing, there's a couple of things, businesses that are doing things correctly. Right. Um, that I've learned and found and also um, kids, millennials that are reached out mm. that have said, I'm inspired. I've learned something. I don't trust certain systems. Where do I go? What do I do? Yeah. And so I've been uh, kind of cultivating, getting some interns and creating research pods for them to research oh, wow. for themselves. So distribute through to other people and right. other, in ways that they can understand. So we're just starting to do that as ways to kind of support trust and support action for them. And then, oh my God, I... I my God, I've got so many questions. I mean, what 
Well, just quickly, if we can, because I know it's been, God knows how, it's been, what was it, like two hours I've been talking to you? I know, it feels like forever. I'm like, are you getting antsy in the chair? Here? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Gonna go do some hot laughs. <laughs> Okay, by the way, I, I should have told you, I normally do this podcast on treadmills and my studio oh, really? is downstairs. Oh, yes. That would have been so and fun. We would have, and so this is not how we normally do it. We have like a whole thing where we do it on treadmills, we talk and we walk. And I don't know why, because of COVID, I thought, you know what, because of the exercise portion, maybe he would be nervous. So we'll do this kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know why. So next time, wow. by the way, you come on the podcast, we're not be, we're not going to be sitting here like okay. a bunch of jackasses. We're going to be cool. on treadmills. Cool. Okay. Right on. And then quickly, would you tell me about um, one two one tribe? Yeah. And then, but you know, make it quick, quick, because I'm you know because we're tapped. Well, you, I mean, literally, I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, what time? It's been like an hour and a half. Poor do guy. I have, do I have other things that I have to do? I don't, I don't know. Do remember. you? I don't <laughs> Um, it's like a black hole over here. Uh, one to one tribe. So yeah, it, incredible group actually out of Romania. Uh, I had connected with them. One guy had started gyms and, and Serena was in the yoga space and they kind of came to me and they were like, listen, you have this incredible book, this uh, way of communicating and we have this opportunity to put make your recipes live and accessible uh mm. and and get some functional training in there and then let education be the catalyst for awareness while they're moving into a program oh, i see okay and then obviously habit forming ways of of using technology to support people and creating new habits because that's one of the biggest challenges of everything right? it's all about habits yeah. we say this all the time yeah and so your partners are in romania is that basically yeah. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So incredible group. And so our idea is to gather more experts yeah. and to continue to make this like a subscription model so people can keep kind of adding to their knowledge, adding to the inspiration, adding to their habit, forming new ways of living and right. using technology for the good. You know? uh, oh, my gosh. You have like so many things going on. Where, I mean, where could people find more <laughs> about you if they need to, if they Check want to? We didn't yeah. even... I have so many questions. By the way, like again, his uh, Darren's uh, best-selling book is called Super Life, and I didn't even really speak about it. I wanted to ask you all about oxidization and detoxification. Will you part seriously? Two. Yeah, part. Well, I'm serious. You yeah. really do have to come sure. back on that treadmill for sure, um, or at your yurt or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna do it okay so where do they find you tell us everything yeah so darrenoline.com has got you know uh, all of the latest stuff well kind of the latest stuff i don't even think the website can keep up with all the things but then i'm 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 pretty tried to stay pretty active on instagram so darren Oline on twitter and all of the other social bloody channels platforms and, yes um but yeah that's pretty much people can find me well thank you for being on the uh, podcast yeah. awesome to meet you thank it was you. awesome to meet you yeah Habits and hustle, time to get it rolling. Stay up on the grind, don't stop, keep it going. Habits and hustle from nothing into something. All out, hosted by Jennifer Cohen. Visionaries, tune in, you can get to know them. Be inspired, this is your moment. Excuses, we ain't having that. The Habits and Hustle Podcast, powered by Habit Nest.